and a day also for celebrating a, a great life. So, yeah, we're all sad, and uh, I think uh, His Royal Highness resonated in Australia because he, is, he was direct, he was pungent, uh, and he was a absolutely besotted with this nation. Sure. And I think we all reciprocated that. So, uh, what I'm seeing and hearing today is sadness, uh, of course, but this sense of celebration of a man who lived life to the fullest and was such a, ma a marvellous support to Her Majesty. Yeah, 32 times he came to Australia. In fact, when we hear stories about his larrikinism, a lot of people suggesting that he may have had a little bit of Australian in him as well. <laughs> well could be. And he certainly uh, emotionally was invested in this in nation. And there's another interesting fact. In 1941, when he was a young officer on a British destroyer at the Battle of Matapan, there were Australians in a Royal Australian Navy ship at that battle, HMAS Perth. So, in 1941, at a big battle in the Mediterranean, Prince uh, Philip and some Australians. So, that's probably where he rubbed shoulders again with uh, some Aussies. Mm. Yeah. So, you were Governor-General from uh, 2014 to 2019. You, of course, held audience with both um, um, the Queen and Prince Philip. Can you tell us some... We've heard some wonderful stories this morning. Sure. He had a twinkle in his eye. Any mischievous stories? Oh, yeah. Well, in 1985, <laughs> the first time I met uh, Prince Philip was at a uh, garden party at Buckingham Palace and you get selected to stand there and uh, uh, if the, the person who's in that little avenue of, uh, of uh, discussions, in my case, was Prince Philip. And I thought, oh, my God. I'm <laughs> and I'm there with Lynn, and uh, he was quite funny. He's looking around and muttering things. He loved the idea of talking to people in uniform because, if you like, that was part of his nature. But uh, in 2014, before I became Governor-General, we had lunch with the Queen and Prince Philip, uh, just the four of us. And that was uh, the start of what I would call a very friendly relationship, which went the whole time. Mm. As with yourself, he saw active duty before having a public life, yeah. as you did. Um, you rose to the, to the top of the military here in Australia. Many suggestions that had he not married the Queen and had to retire from, from that, he could have gone all the way. He was flamboyant, almost piratical, which is, I think, a great trait of the uh, ancient traditions of the Royal Navy, uh, but he was a very good officer and I'm sure that if, he, if he'd have made that his career, uh, he would have been uh, at flag rank and beyond, uh, uh, perhaps to the very top, but uh, to subordinate uh, all of that uh, personal uh, ambition and maybe personal ability to the role that he p played, he rose above yeah. any time in uniform. Mm. Mm. Wonderful. So, mm. yep. May I just go back to that lunch that you had, just the four of you, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I may? Yeah, and there's the obviously lunch. certain royal protocols that you must follow, but during a lunch like that, that I imagine goes for quite some time, was it a, a relaxed affair? Very relaxed. In fact, we, I had the uh, audience with Her Majesty and Prince Philip was there and Lynn was with, with us, of course, and then we um, uh, moved to pre-luncheon drinks and uh, I couldn't see what, uh, what Prince Philip was having because he was just over there a bit and the chap who brought in the tray of drinks just served him his usual drink. I didn't know what he was having, so I thought I'd copy what Her Majesty <laughs> was what having. having. Oh. And I, uh, as the footman said to me, what, what, what would you like to drink, sir? And I said, I'll have what Her Majesty's having. And he... And she looked at me and she said, a du bonnet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not my normal tipple, I can tell you. <laughs> I felt I should have said, well, whatever you know, His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh is having, I'll, I'll have that. Uh, probably a pink gin. She was on the du bonnets at lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's only a little one. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a fun lunch. Yeah. So he, he was a terrific guy. I mean, you, yep. you saw him up close. Yeah, and I, look, uh, everything I've heard on the broadcast today suggests to me we all got the fact that he was the rock. Yeah. Uh, for the Queen in her unceasing duty. And now I feel that the real sadness I feel, it's not for uh, the Duke who's had a wonderful life and has now passed. Mm. I feel sad for the Queen that one of the rocks of her relationship has passed. Mm. And it was a, a, a wonderful romance of 80 plus years, so yeah. she will be missing him greatly. She will be surrounded by friends and yeah. family, um, but she will. there'll be a huge hole in her heart. Yes, and I think Australia... I think the Prime Minister summed it up well. We send her...